Previously, having created the ultimate UK coaster, no, not the one we already have, we don't really have that one anymore anyway. I thought, why not do a similar thing, but this time only combine the best segments of UK coasters rather than just random parts of them. It is time to make the UK's best roller coaster. Hello, welcome back. Today, I thought it'd be fun to take a look at some of the UK's best elements on coasters, such as Stealth's launch or Oblivion's drop or even this insane drop on Duplo Dino Coaster and combine them all into one amazing, exhilarating and excitement filled roller coaster experience. And if you go on to enjoy this stupid challenge I'm doing and you want to see more, feel free to subscribe. It'd be greatly appreciated. We need to start the ride off with some sort of lift hill or I don't know, maybe a launch actually. A massive 80 mile an hour launch straight down. I could probably do a pre-lift section like Saw or Nemesis Infernos. Oh, this is so complicated already. <laughs> At this point, I realised it would take years to think of every single highly regarded moment on coasters in the UK, so I thought, who better to ask than you? Right, I have returned, and I'm back with your guys' help because my brain can't function enough to piece together two pieces of track. And I think by suggestion, a good idea is doing Saw the Ride's indoor section first. So if we draw that in now... A little curve to the left, curve to the right, <laughs> round into the upwards break run, which has some great theming on it because all it is is some harpoons going Get out. Walking Dead the Ride. I love how I said UK coasters and I've just stuck to Thought Park so far. And I think I've just seen the perfect idea as to finishing this pre lift section Babylon Park Coasters, Airtime Hill. <laughs> it's gotta be there. And there you go, that's the pre lift section. You got Saw the Ride, Walking Dead, and. Again, it doesn't have a name. What am I supposed to call it? We're going to whack Exodus's lift hill and then the drop into this because I know it doesn't exist yet, but my God, that will literally be the best thing in this country when it opens. So once we pass the big twisted drop off the big lift hill, surely we need big inversion, which one of the biggest that have been suggested is Odyssey's vertical loop at Fantasy Island. Now I know it's an invert, so you just flip round halfway through, but I feel like last time I missed out inverts, so it'd be nice to have them back in. So we've got to drop a loop. Now we need an airtime moment, and the tallest one that's been suggested again that actually gives airtime, unlike Big Ones Hills, is speed at Oakwood. So we're going to whack that straight in after there. And you know what? On the way back down from that airtime hill, we're going to back to back Oakwood in this bit. From there, it will go down into Megaphobia's first drop because, you know, steel to wood must be good for the spine. Icon's Junior Immelman was suggested a lot, which I think this is a perfect place to put it. And again, scrolling through the suggestions, the best element on Shockwave is the zero G roll. I agree with that. And now it's time for another airtime hill. I have no idea which one I'm gonna go for. I got bored. And we're adding Saw's Airtime Hill. And looking at the map, I feel like we need a turn of some sort because literally all it is is airtime, inversion, airtime. What's that? Another inversion. Storm Chasers Helix. So uh, we'll stick that in there because it'll probably be a very intense experience for guests and guests. And that can be followed by this absolutely beautiful element on Icon. And as much as it's an invert again, a very highly requested one is the downwards helix on Nemesis. I think that has to be included because the intensity on that is enough to make my eyes shatter. And it seems to be that every single element I put in on this coaster, I want it to be the Smiler's second airtime hill. So I feel like it's a good place to do that, plus add Grand Nationals double down on it. <laughs> and by this point, I feel like we're not only 600 foot underground, but we're also losing a lot of speed. So it'd be quite cool to have it go up into some sort of brake run and maybe head into 13's drop track, because that was highly requested on here. What happens in that building? Spoiler alert, 13 actually has a washing machine element on the inside. It's quite cool. Now, from this point, there were two very popular suggestions that would seem unrealistic to put in until now. So if I go throughout the entire 13 section, draw that out, it, this isn't going to be the right layout. I have no idea what it does underground. When you finish the backwards section and you park up, ready to go back forwards again, the traffic lights start going. You shoot off to 80 miles an hour and head up Stealth's top hat. And then on the way back down, you drop into Oblivion. This coaster is a mess. I love it. Come back up again. Bank round as you do on Oblivion. Hop up into the brake run and wait for 10 minutes. And somehow that joined up perfectly. I don't like how that joined up perfectly. I've probably done something horrendously wrong. And that layout there is what I will very shoddily call 
the UK's best roller coaster. And here for you right now is a chopped up POV to showcase what it would look like, I guess. 500 likes and I'll recreate it in Planet Coaster. So oh, oh yeah, there's a pre-show on this ride. Let me make a pre-show for you guys. So, welcome to the UK's best roller coaster. You're about to experience multiple different rides and attractions all in one. Uh, okay, this is crazy. It's basically got like four inversions. It goes up to like 236 feet in the air. It has Babylon Park's roller coaster airtime hill, which is the most ever in the world. And now you're going to experience the POV. Enjoy.